Well, what, what does the Trinity okay. mean? Okay, for me, in the most comprehensive. Right. My reason, time, boss. Say again. With the time. No, no, it's not. It's not, it's not the best. No, 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 three see, see, the reason why I accept what is commonly known as the Trinity. No, not yes. sorry, so I, I know I said I was yeah, going to no, cut you, do, uh, as in the definition, in the most comprehensive way, including okay. terms uh, okay, like, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, right. I believe in my research, when I say my research, I, I'm, I'm going to, anyway. yeah. <laughs> I believe that, the re I'll tell you what, the reason I believe in the Trinity is as follows, very, very brief, briefly. I believe that the, and pick me up if I've said anything that you think is, is untrue or you can correct me on, I believe the entirety of the early Christian church, the New Testament church, was entirely Jewish. I believe that they brought to the table some important theological understandings and formulas that, that they had as Jews, two of which are they worship God the Father, and they also worship God the Spirit in the Temple of Solomon. So we have the Father and the Spirit, which is which is un what's what's it, it's indisputable from a Jewish position that God was Father and that the Spirit of God dwelt in the Temple and they worshipped Him. They brought that to the table uh, in the New Testament Church, along with the belief that the early Christians believed that Jesus was God. So you have the three, the, the, the triune formula in the far in the Father and the Spirit and the Son. And then I also understand that uh, the Trinity, I've tried, I typed in, I want to find the doctrine of the Trinity. I thought it must have been a church council that, that, the, that formalized and canonized the doctrine of the Trinity. There isn't a document called the doctrine of the Trinity. The Trinity which refers to the creeds and, the, and the, uh, the three persons or three essences, three beings, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, primarily in the Nicene Creed. So there is not a document that says this is the, the doctrine of the Trinity. The early church formulated uh, a, 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 a creed called the Nicene Creed which had the tri triune formula. And I suppose just ten seconds more, Father and Spirit were Jewish concepts, that didn't make two gods, that made one God. And the Christians of the New Testament cate categorically, historically believed that Jesus was God. So I put the three together. Say the and last I have sentence again about Jesus. Okay, so the, the Jewish church, the Jewish New Testament church brought Father and Spirit, and the early Christians believed that Jesus was God categorically from the earliest writings of the early church fathers. So I put those together. Historically, I make the claim that this is what the Trinity is. So you can pick that apart. And, uh, okay, so. it's not, I, I'm not really interested in picking no, no, apart. Just maybe have yeah, a discussion. Yeah, I'd like to hear your opinion as a Christian, yeah, sure, as a, yeah. someone who actually can discuss, discuss about. So when we usually talk about the Trinity, we talk about three persons that share the same essence. Yes. And this essence, they usually refer to it as a Godhead. Yeah? So these three persons make up the Godhead. Yeah. They share, share the same divine uh, essence. Yeah, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's different types of properties. It could be ontological by nature or it could be economical by their personhood. And you right. say you, they can differ, and that's where the difference comes in between each person, that God Almighty is unbegotten, the Father. Yeah. The Jesus whom you say is God, he is begotten, and not just begotten, eternally begotten. And then you say the uh, Spirit is eternally preceded. So there are three distinct persons, yeah. and they share the same essence in what's known as the Godhead. Yeah? So this, this is the more, like, from what I understand, comprehensive, or a comprehensive. We're talking about the hypostatic union as well. Well, that's part of it as well. So I just wanted to know your most comprehensive definition of the Trinity, because this is where the questions would then come in. Yeah. For example, and you, you've seen videos, so maybe you heard the question again. Mm. If Jesus is eternal and the Father is eternal, then how can the Father be called the Father and Jesus be called the Son? Because the relationship between a Son and a Father is usually one is greater than the other, or yes. one precedes the other. If Jesus is eternally yes. begotten, what does that mean? Is that not paradoxical? Hey, you know what, that's, that's, that's interesting you said that, because on the train coming down here, I was trying to find an, 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 an analogy mm. to try and best describe how that, how that is. And I think this, this, is, this is perhaps a good analogy. So we have this conundrum where Jesus says, 
that he is God. He also says that the God is greater than him. Uh, he also, uh, you know, gives all the indications that um, he is a human being as well. So how can we reconcile all of these elements and actually come up with some coherent kind of, uh, you know, understanding of why you should even believe in that? And I thought to myself, well, look, if, if, if we if we look at this as an, an, an analogy, okay, if we assume this is God, let's just assume. I'm not being blasphemous, I hope. Okay, right now. This isn't coffee, this is God's spirit. Okay, this is the spirit of God. You can call it his breath, if you want, I think, as a Muslim. Mm. We understand, because he breathed into Mary something no, of not not but, Okay, but, but, okay, this is God. Right, mm. now, now, the coffee is God, and God is pouring it into the man, Jesus Christ. Just, just focus, just for a moment. So what we have, we have two essences, substances, that are identical, the coffee in here, and the coffee in there. Mm. There are two coffees. This coffee came from this coffee. This coffee is greater than this coffee. When I pour the coffee back into here, the coffee will go back to its source. Mm. So if we look at the analogy here just with coffee, and this is the body, the human body of Jesus Christ, for me, it's very, very coherent that if God is spirit, mm. and if the spirit dwelt in the Temple of Solomon and dwelt in the Ark of the Covenant, mm. right, then the spirit can also dwell in man. And that happened for us as Christians at the conception when the Holy Spirit came down on Mary and the Holy Spirit entered into Mary and uh, so for me that makes perfect sense it, it answers lots of those questions that you, you just you to, just to read because I know in conversation we forget the question yes yeah, the question was regards to the father the title the father yes. and the title the son hmm. so if we believe in something like the Trinity we should know what the definitions are that we're espousing right? okay, yeah. so the question was regards to what does father mean and what does son mean if both are eternal and one is not greater than the other yes. they're equal yes so what does it mean to be a father of another if both are eternal one is not before the other nor is one the other after the other okay so again this is what the question originally for sure, was for sure so uh, it might sound clumsy but for me it makes perfect sense if we if we look at the coffee analogy just for one second to answer what you've just said you have got a source let's call it the eternal source of the coffee okay now that cough that 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 flask poured some of itself into a receptacle mm -hmm. that self that entered into that receptacle that essence that being whatever you want to describe it had two realities it had a cup and it had the coffee inside of the cup now jesus in his life here on earth He's, there's a variety of, uh, of verses where he says, the father that dwells in me, he does the work. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm, I'm going to get those verses up for you, but you, you can. Oh, I'm aware, I'm aware of those verses anyway, but the thing is here yeah. now, you're not saying that a part of God's essence or the father's essence came down in the humanity and flesh of Jesus. I am sorry. You, you, well, technically, uh, it's quite heretical. Go on, have Be so. Because I say, say it, because um, you say Jesus is 100% God and 100% man. So what the church fathers tend to have do, to say, yeah, that when you take away from the essence of the Father and put that essence in Jesus, it doesn't actually take away from the essence of the Father. And they draw similitudes, which may be in my interest of you. Right. It's more like fire. Fire, which brings uh, a light another uh, place. And both fires exist, one without diminishing the other. So the definition you gave, it falls into heresy. But again, the According question... to who? Uh, it was the church fathers, if I remember right, I think it was uh, Eusebius, but I'll have to double-check it. be after Nicaea? And that would be around Nicaea and after. Okay, yeah. see, see, as a Christian, mm. in, my, in my position where I stand, I believe historically there was a man called Jesus Christ. But you believe he's 100%. You hear this uh, mantra from all the Christians, he's 100% man and he's 100% God. He is, he is. Yeah, so he can't be part, the part of the essence can't be given to him. The whole of can the essence me, must be given to him. Me According why, to Christianity. No, can you tell me why God can't put his spirit directly to dwell into the tabernacle of a man, a human being? When that when that same God, according to Judaism, mm. dwelt in the tabernacle made of by human hands of stone and the Ark of the Covenant, the principles are identical. Mm. If in the Old Testament, according to Judaism, mm. the Ark of the Covenant, which God commanded to be built mm. so that he could dwell on him, this would be the verse, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Mm. This is the Ark of the Covenant. Mm. So if, 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 if we in the, that's the Old Testament. In the New Testament, mm. a, a body of flesh and blood mm. was chosen. This is the whole reason, as Christians believe, for the virgin birth. 
The whole reason for the virgin birth was to, to provide a holy sanctuary for God. It makes no sense outside of that. So what I'm saying to you, and I'll, I'll back off and you can have as much time as you want, I'm trying to make the point that in the Old Testament, God dwelt on earth. He entered in creation and dwelt in the Ark of the Covenant. In the New Testament, God entered into uh, creation and dwelt in the body of a man whose flesh he took from the Virgin Mary. That's my position. Okay, so the original question, and again, I know in the spirit of discussion, we lose track of ourselves, was the terms the Father and the Son. What definition, what does it mean to be the Father? What does it mean to be the Son? If both of us are eternal, not one precedes the other, both of them exist existed for eternity. How do we call one son and one father, especially when both are equal? One is not greater to the other in according to Trinitarian theology. So what does it mean, the father? What does it mean, the son? Another thing you mentioned no, in the spirit. Can we deal with that? I'm, I'm interested. Tell me. No, but that's a question I, uh, uh, I was asking. Oh, okay. Yeah, originally, yeah, that's yeah. one. But you, you uh, maybe you misinterpreted or maybe I didn't word it well enough here. Yeah? Yeah. But the next question would be about the spirit, which you were talking about the spirit of God dwelling in the tabernacle. Yeah. Now, in regards to spirit, because you say a spirit is one third or God's spirit is one third of the Trinity, which makes up the Godhead, the Father, the Son and the Spirit. Now, if the spirit is a spirit and God the Father is a spirit and his spirit dwelt upon the earth and Jesus before him taking flesh is a spirit, then why do we not call all of them spirits? Why do we call only one of them spirit? So then the question is just based on the terms and that's what I'm trying to understand. Right, okay, yeah. What does Father mean? What okay. does Son mean? And what does Spirit mean? These are just the questions that I want to start and then we can, can I jump back? off. If, if, if we go to the Spirit first, and this is perhaps the most mysterious and most difficult element of the Trinity that lots of people have in trying to describe. But if you understand the Spirit as an attribute of God, an eternal attribute of God in which he... Actually, I got the, the, I'm going to make sure I've got the, 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 the correct formula for trying to describe this to you, because I was working on this today. It's the, and, and I think it fits in with Islam's version of, of the Spirit as well. Let me just... No, no, you, you, you know, I just mentioned the no, verse no. ayat from the Quran. Okay. It says, Yes, Alunaka and Ruh. They ask you, O Muhammad, in regards to the spirit. And, and the brother Muhammad sure. was told that no knowledge, you have only given, been given a small amount of knowledge, meaning that you don't have knowledge of all things like the spirit. For, for sure. That's Islamic. But, but, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. As far as the Islamic understanding well, of, the, of the room. No, no. No, the, 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 yeah. we're talking about the rule. According to Islamic no, no, no. Uh, theology, can I just finish here, which is true, is an agent of divine action or communication. And I hold to that. Okay. God's spirit is an agent of divine action or communication. But and where did that come from, Colin? Can I, can I make a supposition as to where that came from? This came from yeah. Greek, Greek understanding it's philosophy. No, 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 it's not. It's not, it's not. So what, what would your view be? No, no, so in Islam, we have no mediators. You see, in the Bible it says, God the Father and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. The media between, the mediator between God and man. So Jesus in the Christian view is seen as the mediator. In Islam, no. We speak, uh, we call unto Allah. Um, and uh, grant me a few seconds, yeah? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Lillahi, ah, I forgot the verse. Does anyone know, know the verse of the top? Okay, who is more? It says, who is more misguided than the one who calls to other than Allah? Yes. And this is a uh, hope uh, because du'a or calling onto someone we say is a worship, a prayer. So we as Muslims we don't call unto anyone else apart from Allah. Either hushr and nasu. And when mankind will be gathered, yeah, in the next verse of that ayah, which I've just muddled up, it says, when mankind will be assembled or brought together in the final 
time, yeah, there will be the, the people that they worship will be asked, uh, will, sorry, will become their enemy unto them and will reject their ibadah to him, their worship of them as well. Okay. So we don't call unto anyone and we don't have any mediators. The, 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 reason, the reason I ask that is because I had a discussion, not a discussion, just a conversation with Shamsi and we were talking about what, as Christians we would call the virgin birth and the, mm. and the, uh, and, you know, the uh, and Jesus coming into the world and I wanted to understand how according to Islam that Mary conceived the child mm. and the, 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 the key verse is mm. and you can correct me yeah. if I'm wrong mm. uh, and Mary, daughter of Imran, whose body was chased, therefore we breathe therein something of our spirit. Yeah. Now, I wanted to understand what that meant according to Islam. Okay, well, so the word spirit, ruh, if you could tell me yeah, what you So the word ruh has multiple references. Yeah. So, for example, um, when al nazal bihi ruh al amin we sent down the Quran with a, a trustworthy spirit. This reference here is talking to about the angel Gabriel, Jibrail. So in one term... Is, is it Jibrail uh, spirit? So it, ruh, which is the word spirit in English, yeah. refers also to Jibrail. It also can refer to what is breathed into Mary. Not J, the angel Gabriel isn't the thing that's breathed into Mary, but Allah, he breathes a ruh into Mary, yeah? And then there's, and there's nothing... And it, uh, well, yeah, sure, one thing. Yeah, and then, yes, ruh. They ask you about the spirit and then... Uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is told that no knowledge of this is given unto man. This is part of the Ghaybiyat, which is a conversation I was having with Okay, so before. am I right in, 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 in saying that according to Islam, the Virgin Mary mm. conceived mm. through Allah blowing, breathing the Holy Spirit into her. Is that correct? Yeah, but the, when we say According not, not Holy Spirit, a, a spirit. A yeah? spirit. Yeah. It's not the same as what you're referring to. His spirit. This, this spirit. is where we're having God's transfer. Spirit. God's yeah. So nafaka fihi min ruhihi. So Allah subhanahu wa taala. So Allah, He created Adam and breathed in in him a spirit. Yeah. So, oh, it says our yeah, spirit. from our spirit. This is. Well, no, yeah. This is important. Yeah. yeah no, I understand. I understand. Hugely yeah, yeah. important. Part. Rasulullah, uh, the messenger of Allah is like a naqatullah. Some things are joined to Allah, yeah? Like ruh is a joint to Allah. Why? Why in the sentence? is because of, for sharf, for honor. So naqatullah, for example, the camel of Allah, yeah? Right. This is in regards to a parish nation from before who had told me here. Could, could we stick with what we were just no, talking about? No, this is what I was saying. Spirit. I was saying oh, right, the yeah. spirit, so when things, when it says our spirit, it does not yeah. mean necessarily God spirit right yeah it doesn't mean this this a junction yeah this a junction is sometimes only for things which are honored like when it said naqatullah or rasulullah or kitabullah i understand you correctly as opposed to go off on a tangent assuming you've said that you're saying that the surah that says and Mary the daughter of Imran, yeah. who guarded her chastity, we breathed into her of our spirit. Yeah. Doesn't mean it's Allah's spirit that you breathe. No, no, you have to go back to the tafsir and read that. I'm not sure exactly what it says, but I don't think it's what your what your uh, explanation is. You'd have to go back. No, no, we, we, we use more than just literal. We, we have the Quran, the Sunnah, the Ijma, yeah. and so on. This is our sources. In Islam, we're not sold a scriptural. scriptural. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm, you're not Either exactly you follow traditions so we also follow traditions so this is what I'm trying to say to that guy Chris in the conversations if you want to answer don't ask or demand from me as, as a Muslim to give my answer only from Quran it has to if our sources are the Quran and Sunnah then you have to allow me to give our sources and Allah he says this in the Quran he says um, what the Prophet peace and blessings be, be to him what he gives to you, take from it. Yeah. So, uh, and he says, hawa." He does not speak of his own desire. In uh, illa wahin. This is only revelation from Allah. In illa mayuha ilayya. I only follow that which has been revealed unto me. So the prophets in Islam, we have the Quran, and then we have the Sunnah as well. Okay. So, okay, I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. Mm -hmm. So, if we just talk in layman's terms, mm -hmm. then, how do you understand the virgin birth? with God being the agent, direct agent, yeah. to the conception of the, the man Jesus Christ. Okay, so we phrase that. No, no, I understand. So Allah, he says that the similitude of Jesus 
is the similitude of Adam, and Adam was created from dust. And Allah explains again in our sources, Allah blew into him a spirit. And when he says, Did you just one second, say that? Did yeah, 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 Adam blew into yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, not her, I said him, Adam. One second, that's a likeness, yeah, yeah. And, and likewise, uh, in regards to Jesus, he's ruh, a spirit. And then this shows that it must be from God, though. from God, yes. But you're saying, Is it God's spirit? I'm saying, I don't think so. There's nothing to indicate that. But the problem is that you have no, if no, if you take that one verse, but if you take it in light of other verses, you understand the ruh can not only can have multiple definitions, that Jesus is a ruh from Allah. Yeah, I think not Allah's ruh, but do you understand why I said the other one is that when two things are just a box together, when it belongs to Allah, for example, Allah, that's what I'm saying, this is done in order for shab, for honor or takreem. The reason why I'm interested in this mm -hmm. is because that verse there, I think more accurately even than the Bible verse, mm. gives the correct theological understanding that Christians have, i.e. that God, God's Spirit, was because the Christian version would be, and the Holy Spirit will come down upon you. It doesn't go on that breathe, but the connection between the Holy Spirit coming down on Mary, and also the Allah breathing into Mary of His Spirit. They, I don't oh, we, we, no, no, we don't say breathe. We don't say breathe. I say breathe into Adam. Not in regards to Mary. Let me just in this one. It says and we breathe. Let me just get body. Yeah, sure. Let me just get yeah. If I remember that verse says alqa, we cast. So let me because you have to the translation. Forget that. You originally sometimes a word can be polysemantic. Okay. I'll get there. But I'll read to Yeah. Okay. I'll read. I'll read. If you give me the verses and then I yeah. So it's the same verse. Yeah. So I'll read the Arabic so you know and then I can show you the definition. Yeah? Yeah. And then Quran, so my hands are freezing. Yeah. You need some of these. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, 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 don't say that. 66, sort of 66. Sort of 66. Because I've got one, two, three, four, five of these. From the uh, same, yeah, yeah. These different, they call them kirats, the different translations. Qiraat, yeah. Qiraat, yeah. Qiraat. One, two, three, four, five. Different translations with variants there that show that Allah breathed. No, these aren't variants. Into. We don't well, say there's a variance. Well, when I say variants, mm. I mean the, 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 the wording is different on each. So, so, okay, yeah, so. Look, can I just see? No, no, these are not Qiraat, sorry. What are they? These are, no, 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 no. These are interpretations. So, yeah, the translations. And this ah, is. Right, so, you have Pictful, ah. Ali, Shakir, and uh, Hilal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all of these guys translated. Now, it depends on your lexicon. Yeah? It depends. But the Which thing. Do you prefer? No, no, well, I'm still trying to figure out. I prefer the Arabic, honestly. I prefer the honor yeah. because you don't have this problem of translation. Okay. It's raining cats and dogs. This is an idiom found in English. Impossible to translate into sure. Arabic, sure. except that we change it. And that's why there's a difference between translation and interpretation. Right. We believe the Quran in its origin in Arabic can never be translated. It can be interpreted into English. Sure. And this is a this problem. Right. So, um, and even in this translation, what we have here, it says, um, there is also the example of Mary, the daughter of Imran, who guarded her chastity, so we breathed into her, that's her the, womb. That's yeah. The key, that's the key. Yeah, yeah. So the right, right this is right what I said. Nafaka. I, I said breathing, and you mentioned that it wasn't breathing. Uh, did I? Are you sure? Yes, yeah, yeah. I think so. I mean, I could be wrong. So you're. No, no. It, okay. So yeah. No. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I initially no, said no, in regards said, to yeah, Adam. Yeah, sorry. No, no. Yeah. So initially, I mentioned the hadith about Adam when his soul was uh, breathing. Yeah, the same, the same but the same thing. You. Yeah. The that's same thing is. Yeah. 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 But basically, mythically, Shane, as in this is a qaida that we say Allah is not like humans. So, for example, you are alive, and Allah, He says, Al Hay, He is alive. But your life includes death. Allah's life does not include death. Only so, the attributes. No, no, no. My spirit doesn't uh, If God, you, once upon a time, you were nothing. You know, once upon a time, you never existed. God's life, He always existed. He was our. He was, he was, yeah, he was, he was a person, He is the last. You see what I'm saying? So, the 
attributes of man is different from the attributes of God. For sure, for sure. So can, so can we get to this, 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 this not conundrum, this nugget that we're, we're analysing, is that I'm happy to accept, even though you say it doesn't necessarily mean what I, I think that it means, the literal understanding... No, it says nafakha, breathed, yeah, this is... Yeah, nafakha, yeah. ...something of our spirit. So for me, Allah is making a very clear statement here that he personally, to bring about the life of Jesus Christ in Mary's womb, breathed his spirit in, and that fits exactly no, no, no. with the Christian. Yeah, yeah, but I've explained that we don't take verses out of context. When, when the Quran mentions that Jesus is a spirit, John Yahya was a spirit, so it's not just one. Uh, no. Angel Jibreel, Angel Jibreel, yeah, no, 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 but it happens with other things. The Angel Jibreel, yeah, also is referred to as a uh, spirit as well. Yeah, so, can you explain that to me? Yeah, no, it's just, uh, what was it, what did you need to explain? Yeah, you, you said that sometimes the angel Gabriel, Jibril, yeah. is, is used in the translation instead of breathe of our spirit. And I want to understand how, how Gabriel can take the place of the spirit. No, 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 it's not, it's not. No? Some words are polysemantic, meaning it can have help me, help uh, multiple, me. multiple definitions or references. You want to say, for example, I say I booked a hotel. A book can be this and a book can be the verb, which means I actually done something, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so, no, no one says, yeah, so, 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 you're Colin, you're Colin, but you're not the only Colin in the world, but the reference is the same. So you can be Colin, that guy can be Colin. So in Arabic, you have the same thing. You have Ruh, which means spirit. Allah, when you look at in the Quran, he says, Where, Jibril, Jibril, where how does Jibril become the spirit? It, it doesn't become the spirit that you're talking, you're just watching the two together, no. no. Allah refers to him as a spirit, yeah? But, but, this, but this surah, mm. which I've got one, two, three, four, five, different translations alternately uses the word our spirit no, no, this is what I'm saying this is what I'm saying when, when in, this is what I'm saying when, in Arabic here yeah, in Arabic here yeah, when you the brackets mean no 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 it's no, no, no. all right so me saying Jibril in brackets doesn't change uh, it from yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Could you, could you help me out? Yeah, yeah. This is نزل به روح العالمين. This is in regards to the Quran coming down or being sent down. Yeah, it was sent down by Allah unto the angel Jibrail. No, when it says, I want yeah. to understand that the Quran was sent down. Yeah, yeah. To in uh, to angel Jibril Islam who gave it to the Prophet Muhammad. So he Muhammad was the Muhammad. agent. Who he, he, he was the delivery. Yeah, yes. Oh, so, right. so the angel Gabriel was the one in in the cave. Like you have, for example, the dream of Joseph when the spirit when an angel came unto him and said, "You should have glad tidings of a son. You should he should be called." Okay. So yeah. Like so, so yeah, exactly. So that. it happens. Yeah. yeah. So in uh, Islam, we have God. The angel wouldn't be making it up himself. It must have come from God. Yeah, exactly. Is that Ruh al Amin, the trustworthy? So uh, spirit from us, yeah. I mean, yeah. So if you read, read it. نزل بروح العمين على قلبك upon your heart, O Muhammad, لتكون من المنذرين. So you could be maybe from those who warn the people. So the ruh it refers to more than one. It can be spirit of Jesus, John the Baptist, the angel Jibril, and there's an element where it says they ask you about ruh, and nobody knows about this. This is a knowledge which is reserved. Uh, Hamza, one second, Colin, one second, one second. I know. You're you're thinking about things, but you're jumping ahead. I need you to be with me. Yeah. Sometimes I want to go back, not jump back. Yeah, yeah. Go on. Which, well, so when it says just ruh, they ask you about the soul, and then Allah He says that no man knows about these things. Yeah, this is a knowledge which is exclusively reserved for God Almighty. Mm -hmm. Now that's what the spirit is. But what reason we got to this stage of our discussion is regards to God and God's spirit in the Bible. So my question was initially, and this is where we spoke about what does Father mean if both are eternal mm -hmm. and both are equal what does being a father mean what does being a son mean if yeah. both are eternal sure. and both are equal what does spirit mean if God is a spirit that's what the Bible says God is a spirit yeah. and it also say before Jesus came into the body he was a logos meaning he was not of any physical form he was a spirit okay. so why is it we refer to one as a father yeah. one as the son and one as the spirit even okay. though it doesn't make sense to be father can I, can I just, to the best of my and that's 
but that's how we got to okay, this yeah. uh, to whole of, topic. Yeah. To the best of my ability, if I can break it down to this, Christians believe the source yeah, of the Son that, that, and the Spirit no, comes from the Father. The reason he's called the Father is because he is the originator. He is the source of all things. He's the, the source of absolutely everything but, of us. Here. But if you say someone has a father, then his mother has sex, but she never has sex. No, no, no. Oh, okay. no, we're not talking about the, but, that. We're, we're talk, well, your question to me was was how can we reconcile... No, 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 reckon us. Okay, what was... Uh, how do we make, sorry, make I'm sense I'm of, of the these hand. definitions? Oh, okay. As in, because I asked this like three or four times, but yeah, we no, ended up in no, multiple sure, places. Sure. So I'm going to kind of pin you on this, yeah, not yeah. in a debate way, just so we don't yeah, move yeah. and keep reminding you. I, I so the definitions of these terms, because we want okay. to talk about the Trinity and your belief. Sure, so sure. we initially asked you, what do these terms even I mean? Think, I think you very, very uh, eloquently have pointed the problem we need to wrestle to, actually to the Spirit. Because I believe, and Christians believe, the Spirit of God dwelt in Jesus Christ. And that's what made, can I just... Yeah, yeah, sure. Sure. That is what made Jesus Christ the Son of God, because his Spirit was dwelling in him. And also we have, outside of the Son, the Spirit of God that was in the temple in the Old Testament, and the Spirit of God, God that, uh, that um, baptised the church at Pentecost. So we see the Spirit in various places. But to answer my friend Hamza's here, I'll only take a few seconds, right, just to, to re-clarify. The Spirit of God, I understand in exactly the literal sense, I know you, you would say, I shouldn't take it literally, mm. but in exactly the, li the, the, the literal sense of this Surah 6612, where God breathed into Mary something of his spirit. And when he did that, he would have said, let it be. And I believe that is the word that he uses to bring about his, his action on earth. So that's why we call Jesus Christ the word of God. God said, be, and it was. And the Holy Spirit entered into the flesh of Mary. So unlike Adam, who was an inanimate... Uh, was made from inanimate material matter called the clay. God in the New Testament chose to chose to dwell in the womb of Mary, mm. Holy Mary. But, but Colin, uh, is it, I know it's a difficult question. I know, so I'm not expecting you to answer. But these are pertinent things that need dealing. What are the definitions of this Trinity? The Father, the Son. Is, I, I, I know you keep mentioning that, but just I need to pin you on this topic. Yeah. Could you so, put me on one first, and then we'll move? Yeah, to sure, sure. Okay, let's go to another one since I've asked the same question a few times uh, okay yeah. now when you say Jesus is eternally begotten what do you understand or you believe as a Christian on that in order because this is the basis of your faith right. you, know, you believe in the Trinity okay. this is your salvation okay. Okay. so what does it mean if Jesus is eternally begotten Jesus is eternally begotten in the sense that the eternal spirit of God was dwelling no, in the definition just, definition that is the definition that is the, uh, the definition so what does begotten mean Huh? What's a begotten well, well, actually, can you give me the verse where the, the word begotten actually is? In? Well, it used to be in, is it Matthew 3, is it, sorry, John 3, 16, isn't it? For God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son. And then, uh, but this became part of creed, I think it's a Nicene creed, if you check it. Oh, the, right, yes. Yeah, the, the, yeah, they refer to this as uh, Jesus being the begotten, eternal begotten son of God. And the, the spirit is the eternal, of, uh, proce eternally proceeded okay. from the Father. Father, yeah. and depending on what church, it could be from the Father and the Son. Uh, I want to make you satisfied that I've given you the best answer. So I want, again, I'll tell you what I think you've asked me. I think you've asked me about where does the eternal nature of Jesus Christ come from? Would that essentially be it? Could you read No, no. Again? Go on, it's just the definitions. If I call you a man, it's because I'm assuming you have ma you're male. Yeah? If we're saying that Jesus is the son, yeah. but you're saying no, it doesn't mean son through the act of sex or no, something. Yeah? It's not begotten in that sense. Yeah? So what sense do you mean that Jesus is a son to the father? Right, again. Okay. If both are eternal back. and both are equal. Hamza has asked me this question. In what sense do I understand that Jesus is the son of God? Is that the sense? No, no, no. What does it mean to be the son of God? That was initial my question. What does it mean to be the father? Now I'm asking. You eternal in there as yeah, well. Yeah, because this is part of the creed that was eternally begotten okay. and eternally preceded the spirit. Sure, so right. when you say eternally begotten, this is the new question because I left that old question. The new question was.
was eternally begotten. What does that mean to you? Okay. The okay. definition to yes. it. Okay. So, not my, 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 uh, what I believe, this is what the early Christians believed. They believed that, mm, that at, the, at the act of conception, that the Spirit of God entered into Mary and took flesh from Mary to dwell in. The reason that we call uh, Jesus Christ eternal and unbegotten is only in his, in his relationship to God, not to his, his humanity. So if we have Jesus dwelling in the temple, the, the, the bodily temple of Jesus Christ, we have the Spirit of God dwelling there, that part is most definitely eternal because it comes directly from the agency of God. So, so, so the engagement, the question of engagement, if uh, that this begotten means that he is dwelling in flesh, yes. how can that eternal, how can it be eternal dwelling? For example, because the word is eternally begotten, eternally begotten, it's an adjective, no, it's I, describing... No, actually, that's, we, we have to get to this, because yeah, that's of course, Yeah, yeah, of course, that's what I'm No, no, it's from the creed, I'll show you. Oh, it's a, Jesus is eternally begotten. Is from the Nicene Creed? Yeah, my fingers are frozen, yeah, so I can't really... You'll be home soon. No, no, it's not that <laughs> eternally yeah, begotten. Yeah, uh, I come from a different country. <laughs> yeah, eternally begotten. Okay. You, uh, did, this is... Oh, that's it's going to be from the Nicene Creed. Yeah, yeah, let's go. I've got the Nicene Creed. Yeah, okay, in the Nicene Creed, the Catholic Church asserts that the Son of God is eternally begotten. This is from Catholic.com. Well, I've actually got the Nicene Creed. Yeah. And I says, I believe in one God, the Father of Here is, here is. Right? I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, mm -hmm. true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we have here, yeah. they're saying that, um, that the, the, the divinity of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. is unbegotten and comes directly... Before all ages, yeah, meaning before eternally, all ages, yes. Meaning that the Spirit of God, which you all understand, is eternal, right, is dwelling in the man Jesus Christ. No, this but, is what they understand. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so now... I, I think it's yeah, so, so it's eternally... So when Jesus, for example, says he gave up his flesh, mm. he gave up his flesh, yeah. So he's no longer dwelling in that tabernacle. Okay, well, you're talking about when So how is he eternally? How is he eternally? Even prior to that, in yeah. the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and then the Word became flesh. He never had that for eternity. Yeah, so there was no... Uh, if you define begotten, this is going by your definition, as dwelling in this tabernacle, the human body, yeah. then you see it's hard to reconcile because Jesus never always dwelt in that tabernacle of flesh. Because in the beginning, he was with God without flesh, and then he took no, no, on no, no, flesh, no, no. and then afterwards he gave up that I know, flesh. I know, I know why we're having a problem. The dual nature of Jesus Christ. Christians have always believed that Jesus was uh, human and divine, That's right. the hypostatic union. So every time that my friend Hamza here is, 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 is asking me a question based on uh, the eternal nature of Jesus Christ, it is always... Not the eternal nature, it's just a definition of eternally begotten. No, okay. If, if we apply the, the term eternally begotten to the person Jesus Christ, it only ever refers to the divinity that dwells in him. It never refers no, to... No, oh, that's great, that's great. But I asked you what the definition of begotten was. You said the dwelling in flesh. That's why I said that. Okay. I said according to your definition, you you have to answer some difficulties. Well, no, tell, tell me what question you asked. So initially I asked you what the definition, your definition of eternally begotten means. You said that this begotten means that the dwelling of Jesus into the flesh. Mm. So if this is an eternal process of God, or what you say, the essence, yeah. dwelling in flesh, yeah. how can it be eternal? Because once upon a time you say Jesus did not have flesh. Another time afterwards he says no, he gave no. up the flesh. No, no. So then again, that definition that you gave, the dwelling in flesh, okay. does not make sense if it is eternally begotten. Okay, can I try and break this down? And I'm happy to give actually to fall alongside with the, the, uh, the surah that I've, I've shared with you, is the fact that at a time, God's spirit never dwelt in Mary. But on one night in creation, God decided to breathe into Mary something of his spirit. Now, the reason he did that brought about the man Jesus.
Jesus Christ. But obviously Jesus Christ didn't have an earthly father. So the only source we have next is the father of Jesus Christ is God whose spirit animated the flesh and he dwelt in him just as he did in the Old Testament uh, in, in a tabernacle made of stone. Okay, what I'm just going to reiterate some of the you're, questions. You're fine. I'm just going to reiterate some of the questions yeah. here. Could, could yeah, you make Colin. Proof? Yeah, yeah, sure. So initially I asked what the definition of father was, what the definition of son was, what the definition of spirit was, what the definition of eternally begotten is. Yeah. It's the last one. I don't want to spend too much time here yeah, because these are terms that come in the definition of the Trinity. And that's the only reason I'm trying to understand what your definition is. But I don't feel, honestly, that you've answered the questions. And obviously it's for it's for anyone to, to believe. As in, I still don't know what Father means according to you. Right. If both are eternal and both are equal. I still don't know what Son means because you're saying it's not begotten in the carnal flesh that one had sex with someone else to give birth to another. So what do you mean by saying one is Father without giving superiority to the Father and not the Son? You know and then the, the last the last one was the Spirit obviously yeah. as in um, and, and, uh, and I kind of want to keep this going yeah. Okay, okay. The, the question so, so my question would be now uh, is yeah if for example you have three persons three persons Colin Timothy and John Colin Timothy and John right. now all of these persons are they share humanity right they all share the same humanity there are three persons three different names they all share the same humanity right it's similar to the Trinity you say they share the same essence or you which is divine so they share the same God's nature yeah or divine nature yeah? could, could you could you I was just uh, formulating a question. A score, a score. See, I think one of the problems we've had, maybe in the breakdown of my response, and it's my fault, is that, that there are there are parts to each of the questions, and it's difficult to to focus on one of the parts of my friend Hamza's his question, and it seems like I'm ignoring the others, but they form a whole. No, 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 no. The topic we're having is Trinity, so I'm not even trying to get into the the problems of yeah, the, the Trinity. Side, yeah, I haven't even. I'm just trying to understand yeah. the definition. So that's yeah. why I wanted to know what the Father was, what is the Son, and what is the Spirit. Because once again, once again, no, 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 uh, yeah, sure, sure. Because I, I remember we said initially we let each other speak, so I'll let you speak and everything. So I'll just. You can always speak more than me. Yes, sir, thank you very much. So it's like these three persons are part of that Trinity, and this is what this definition is. If I don't know what Father is, I don't know what the Trinity is. If I don't know what the Son is, I don't know what the Trinity is. If I don't know what the Spirit is, I don't know what the Trinity is. If I don't know the other elements that these three are equal, these three are distinct from each other, because it's part of the Trinity, then I don't know what the Trinity is. So I ask, I'm asking you for the definitions of these words that most Christians use to define the Trinity in order for me to first understand what the Trinity is. So far, not one any of these definitions I feel content with saying that I know what Father now means in your view, or what Son now means in your view, or what even Spirit means in your view in your view and the reasons why I give the father and son are if both okay. supposed to be eternal are both supposed to be yeah. co-equal in their nature ontology not their economy in their persons so how is it that we can say one is the father one is the son why is one called spirit when all of them are worse spirits you know so we have to we have to ask ourselves these questions what is the trinity I haven't gone to the trinity itself right, right. So can, I, can I make a response yeah and then we can kind of wrap it up yeah, yeah. okay um, that's all I I've enjoyed the conversation we've had with this uh, young man here, and uh, look, you know, I can sense the spirit. We're talking about the spirit. Uh, uh, no, we're talking about the spirit. Yeah, we're talking about the spirit between us two. Now, now, what I feel seems to have been a, a slight slowdown in the communication we've had here is that I was hoping that the conversation would obviously tell me what you think, and then we'll go point by point, not point, point, point in the same dialogue. So what I wanted to do was really go back to what I said right at the beginning was that as a Christian, as a Trinitarian, I hold to the Jewish belief in God the Father, the Jewish belief in God the Spirit, and I believe in the Christian belief in the uh, deity of Jesus Christ. And I would like, would have liked to have the opportunity to visit each one of those individually and, and, and break it down for my friend Hamza, which then should give him, I'm not asking Hamza to believe me, all I want to do is tell Hamza what they believe. But and this, uh, this is it, Colin. To, uh, I wanted to understand the definition. If you recall at the beginning of the question, uh, the, this dialogue, I asked you maybe 
four times had to re-jog your memory about what the discussion was. And that was at the beginning of the, I asked what the definitions in the most comprehensive way is, in your view, of what the definition of the father and son is. That was the first question. I asked that maybe four times. So we did try to go, honestly, we did try to go part by part. It wasn't that I threw all of these in. I worked in it. So I first asked about the definition of father and then the son and we spoke about it. Then I asked about the death said, let's move away from that because I asked you maybe four or five I know, times. I know, I know once again. So I, yeah, this is what happened, you remember? Yeah, yeah. So I asked maybe, we've, I've asked you maybe four or five times about this one question. Let me move to the next question about what spirit means. And then we spoke about that, but you spoke about spirit being in the tabernacle. And the, okay, okay. So then we moved to the next question. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't that all of these things no, no, were brought no. in. Possibly um, it would be a good idea for anyone who's watching this video. Yeah. If you go back and you, you, you carefully watch how this conversation has gone, and I'm hoping that yeah. I wasn't on purpose trying to obfuscate or anything else, yeah, yeah. but I realise that in a dialogue, if I try to address one portion of what you say to give you a definition, we can then immediately go into, but what do you mean by that definition? We can go and it opens up. No, but up until now, Colin, I don't have a definition of what Father is uh, okay. and the Son. Do you believe the Jews believed in God the Father? Do you believe the Jews, not you, do you believe yeah. the Jews acknowledge God as Father? Sometimes, yes, no, in the did. language. Always, always. Huh? He was known Sometimes as in the, yeah, I'm he not... was known as Father. You know that neither. Yeah, okay. Do you believe that they worship God the Spirit in the temple? No, 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 I don't believe that. Don't no, believe no, no, that I don't believe that. No. no, no, that's not, the, that's not the same. No, 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 no. Do, no, no you, I'll, give, I'll, I'll, I'll answer you. Do you believe that God came down to Jacob and lost in the wrestling match? Hang on. No, no, you'll understand, you'll understand, no, I, you'll understand, Colin, trust no, 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 me, no, 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 trust no, 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 me, entertain me. I want to understand. Do you believe that God came down, and in, as in Genesis mentions, yeah, is it, right. yeah, that God came down and he argued with uh, Jacob, and Jacob beat God in that wrestling match, and then Jacob was then renamed to Israel, for you have struggled with God and you have won. So God called him Israel. Do you believe that was God? Okay. For the the clarification of the camera. I, I'll I asked explain my, why. I no, asked explain my why. friend Hamza mm. a question, mm. as in, do you believe that the Jews worship God, the Spirit, and the Temple? And instead of giving me an answer, he asked me about Jacob. Yeah, there's would, a reason. There's a reason. I'll show. Explain okay. the reason, so you my don't get confused. No, no. From my yeah. understanding of this the called wrestling match, yes, the, the, this the is called theophany. Yes. This is called From what I understand, yeah. as, a, as a wrestling match, in some way, an intermediary angel or whatever, it's a mysterious thing. Excellent. Way that That's the point. It's called theophany. So this is represented as. God's spirit, an angel, yeah, right. came down. In the yeah. desert, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes, that, you, you but see. That but that away from the fact that God dwelt in the temple in his spirit. That doesn't take No, away but they did not fact. worship him. They did. No, they didn't worship the spirit. You don't believe they worship God's spirit dwelling in the temple? No, I don't believe they worship it as a separate entity. Not as a separate entity. It's exactly, as but, God. but the Trinity doesn't say that they're a single entity. They're three separate distinct persons. Father and spirit doesn't make two gods according to... No, no, but you believe that they're distinct persons. Okay. This is what I was saying. Imagine the example now of Colin, Timothy, and John. This is an example. They all have the same nature, which is humanity. But we don't say they're one human. We say they're three humans. Yeah. They're three different persons. They're three different humans. Yeah. So when you say you, that Jesus, the Spirit, and God the Father have the same essence, but they're still one God. Yeah. How is that possible? And you say that Jesus is God, the Father is yeah. God, God and the spirit is God, yeah, yeah. but these are three. Uh, these three are one God. What I think, what because you don't do that with humans. For, for example, for, sure. for example, yourself, you're Colin, my, my point. Timothy, I, I, my and think John. My question, Hamza. Yeah. Could we go back? Maybe you. Uh, we have to cut this now because no, I feel yeah, like yeah. honestly, yeah. I, I um, I don't know. I, I just feel a bit kind of like as we spent so much time mm. up on this point. I honestly don't know what the basic terms are to even move forward with this discussion. I've even got to that point. Hey, right. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah. it. You like haven't it. even got to the theological side. I haven't even, no, I honestly. To go into what yeah, yeah. Well, let's you know call what? it a day okay. and then we're going to resume and rejoin them maybe another time. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure be here. Know, I, I would be yeah. happy. I yeah. mean, as I say, the Jews believe in God, the Father and the Spirit and the Christian. But the Jews worship in the, the worship of only one God, which is the Shema. Hear ye, O Israel, your Lord, the God is one. And this is what Jesus said, the greatest commandment is that you worship only your one God. He never said worship it. And you said the 
first Christians, I just would have lost some point. Yeah, the yeah. first Christians worship Jesus as God. Jesus asked them, who do you say I am? None of them replied that you are God. So this is evidence that none of them... They're the church fathers. Yeah, see, they're not the first Christians. The first Christians were the apostles and the disciples of Jesus. Yeah. And they were the first ones who, who, who followed Jesus and they never worshipped Jesus. There's a distinction. So they're not the first... The, the Trinitarians are not the first... The church fathers the, the are not the first fathers, Christians. The early church fathers were the disciples of the apostles. Okay, now, now who, give me who the earliest uh, church okay, father is. Irenaeus. Irenaeus. Justin what, Martha, okay, Justin Mark came Martha, in what year? Let's, let's just Ignatius. pick, let's pick hang up. On, hang on, yeah. I thought you didn't want to have a conversation oh, anymore. No he did have one. All I'll finish it off is... No, no, but uh, Colin, Colin, Colin. <laughs> Justin Mark, what, what year was he What year was he born Would after Jesus? Let me give it to you. Yeah. Because he's not early, he's not early. And not only that, he thought, he, he says he doesn't believe in a trinity like how you believe. He, believe God, he doesn't believe it. He believes Hang Jesus the, the as a was, second. They believe Jesus yeah, 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 God. Let me make a point. They, they yeah, let me Jesus make a point. God. Let me point. He did not believe in a trinity. He believed in a hierarchy. But God the Father is greater than Jesus the Son. And that's what he's accused of. Trinitarians cannot call Justin Martyr, whom you're saying is a church father, and early, but he's not. What's he going to call him? Because because we're talking about the early Christians. The early Christians are the disciples of Jesus. What did they do? They didn't believe Jesus to be God. They worshipped with him to that one God, as Jesus said. And my my last thing, I'm going to depart after this here. The question is, if you saw Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, he went away from his companions and then he he, put, he put face, face down, down on the ground like Muslim, like Muslim like, yeah, and he yeah. prayed to who not himself yeah. to that one God uh, if you call in yeah. saw Jesus in that position in the garden or the mountain of God yeah. Gethsemane would you pray to him or would you pray with him would I pray That's the easiest to decision. Jesus Christ here in the garden and he's down there on the praying floor. to God I I would I would bow down with Jesus Christ recognizing God the Father I'm waiting for you to become Muslim. We're going to have a drink. So next time, next time. Of course I would do. What's that? Jesus Christ, when he... Well, you can't believe when he said, when he, when he knelt down in the garden of Gethsemane, right? Acknowledging... Let's leave it. Let's say we do He was doing that in his humanity. Of course he was. In his humanity. Okay, but okay, when he's not human. What do you mean when he's not Like he gave up the flesh. Well, this is after he died. This is after you say he died. Okay, hear me. Hear me, hear me. My question was, would you worship with him that's or would you worship subject. to him? That's what I asked. Help point my face to the same father. We that's, that's, that's exactly what you do. Yeah, so, so, <laughs> we as Muslims, we However, turn our faces. Oh, oh, so, uh, so, the moment I get into it, you cut me off. In, we say, <laughs> We turn our faces to the one who had created the heavens and the earth, and we go into yeah. the courts of Islam. <laughs> We do not. We were not ordered, except that we should worship Allah alone with sincerity. Yeah. And this is what no, we as Muslims yeah, say. Yeah. Colin, let's okay, leave it. We'll, we'll, we'll do a rejoinder. You know what, what I will say is, I enjoyed the conversation, yeah. and please God, there'll be more conversations okay. like this. Yeah. Take care.